Hi, this is Katasta Charisma. In the new HUD manual, there are many measurements we need to take, but the sheer number of pages dedicated to describing them all can make the task of taking them rather daunting. I thought then it might be best to make a video which hopefully may make things less discouraging. Three of the most important measurements are the head, jaw and bottom neck circumferences. They are important because they act as a frame within which numerous other measurements are taken. It is vital then that we get these correct right from the start. On the screen you will see a number of points. These are starting points and destination points for taking our three measurements. The first point is on the forehead. But why have I positioned it here rather than slightly below or higher up? Well actually if the head was steeper or more shallow these would be legitimate places. Essentially the point we opt for is the point where the more vertical orientated profile of the forehead begins to slope back more gradually orientating to the horizontal profile of the crown. Now it isn't that this is an exact spot that is visually easy to find but the important thing is that once we are happy with the location that we stick with it as numerous other measurements will stem from it. As such it can be a good idea to mark this point on the forehead using something like a skin friendly tape. So the third eye of the forehead is our starting point while at the back we have a destination point, the occipital point. Here the point we choose is similar to the front. In this case it is where the skull starts to slope under itself from its vertical profile. So it isn't the base of the skull but rather a short distance 3 to 5 centimeters above it. When we take our measurement from the third eye to the occipital bone and back around to the third eye again our tape measure should travel around a finger's width above the ear. Another clue regarding whether our points are right or not is that if our tape measure slips down or travels higher then typically the measurement will become smaller. So our head circumference is our largest measurement around our head. Our next measurement is what I simply call the jaw circumference. Our starting point is self-explanatory. It is the bottom of the chin. The destination point is the nape. We can feel the nape as the base of the skull. We can also find it at the top of a groove that runs up the back of the neck. When we measure from the chin to the nape and back around again, the tape measure initially follows the bottom of the jaw. It then passes under the ear by around a finger's width before then following the base of the skull. Our last important circumference measurement is the bottom neck circumference. Here we start at the jugular, the soft U shape at the base of the front of the neck. Our destination is the seventh cervical vertebrae. This we can find by feeling for a bony lump at the bottom back of the neck. When we measure this circumference, it can sometimes be difficult to know where the tape measure passes over at the sides across the shoulders. There is no easy answer to this, but if one was to prod to the region, it would feel very tender. However, this measurement is also called the t-shirt line. So if one was to wear a good fitting t-shirt, we can simply follow its neck opening. One thing that should be mentioned is that it is all well and good seeing measurements being taken on a bald head but what if we have long hair? Ideally we should take our measurements according to how we wear our hair. If we plan for our hair to be in a ponytail that protrudes out of the hood then we need to make sure that the ponytail isn't positioned on the head where we might also plan to incorporate a back zipper. If we bundle our hair up under the nape of our neck then we should take our measurements with our hair bundled up. If we don't, then we get incorrect measurements, and so a hood that doesn't fit. If we enjoy masking, then we should take our measurements whilst wearing the mask. Taking measurements from off an unworn mask will give us false measurements, as often when worn, the mask often has to stretch. With the head, jaw and bottom neck circumferences, we have a frame for the taking of other measurements. They break the head and neck into three regions. A semicircle that forms the crown within which we have just a couple of measurements. A square that forms the neck within which between the front and back we have mid neck and top neck circumferences. As well as vertical measurements stemming from the shoulder and the hollow of the clavicle, the collarbone. 
And then in the centre, we have the triangle that forms the face and head region, within which most measurements occur towards the front with the facial features from the forehead down to the chin, as well as the eye and optional ear region. So let's now look at these further measurements in a bit more detail. The first is the vertical back of the head measurement, simply linking the head and jaw circumferences, the occipital and nape destination points. Next is the back of the neck. This is a vertical measurement again from the nape to the seventh cervical vertebrae. Then we have the front of the neck, another vertical measurement connecting the chin to the jugular. We then have the front to back crown measurement linking the third eye over the top of the head to the occipital point, and the side to side crown measurement taken from just above the ear along the head circumference. Note that this measurement does not go vertically straight up, but slants backwards. If our tape measure moved further back or forward, our measurement would get smaller. We can take the front to back crown measurement both as a whole as well as broken down into front and back regions. What you will notice is that other than the facial features between the third eye and the chin, we have linked all other starting and destination points. The crown region is complete, but we still have a number of measurements for the neck. One is the shoulder location, which follows the bottom neck circumference from the seventh cervical vertebrae to the shoulder. The next is a halfway point between the shoulder and the jugular. This is called the clavicle hollow point, simply because it lies in the hollow between the neck and the collarbone. From these two points around the base of the neck, we take vertical measurements up to the jaw circumference. The measurement from the shoulder ends up just below the ear, while the one from the clavicle hollow point falls typically in a hollow of the jaw just before the mandible angle the point where the jaw curves up towards the ear. After these, we have to find the points for taking other neck circumference measurements. The lower neck point on the front of the neck is typically around the epiglottis, the Adam's apple, measured up from the jugular. And from this point, we take the mid neck circumference, the smallest circumference around the neck. An optional measurement is that we can find the upper neck point, measured down from the chin. From here, we take the top neck circumference. At the back, this typically falls on the point where the curvature coming down from the base of the skull begins to straighten out. Other optional measurements can include ones taken from the chin to the mandible angle and from there to the upper neck point, forming the upper neck depth measurement. These we use for more refined types of neck fittings. With all the neck measurements taken, we can now focus on the facial features. Points down the upper half of the centre front of the face include the third eye, the glabella, the smooth region between the eyebrows, the bridge located between the eyes, the nose tip and the septum, the partition between the chambers of the nostrils. Down the lower half we have the philtrum, the groove down the upper lip region, the mouth and the chin. We take vertical measurements between all these points, so from the forehead to the middle of the eyebrows, to the bridge, to the nose tip, to the base of the nose, to the top lip, to the bottom lip and finally to the chin. We also need to take a measurement I call the facial line. This begins on the head circumference directly above the eye pupil. So we first need a horizontal measurement from the third eye to this point along the head circumference line. 
called the forehead measurement, or what I have labelled here in the video as the brow. From this point we then take a vertical measurement down to the chin. This often sees the tape measure passing over the pupil, travelling past the nostril flare and slipping to one side of the mouth crease. We can also take some optional measurements including the chin dip and the upper lip and lower lip. We only need to take these kinds of measurements if we are planning to include extra features or more specific types of fits. One measurement which isn't optional is the mouth crease, a horizontal measurement of the width of the mouth. When we take such measurements it is easier if we take the measurement for the entire mouth and then half the result rather than attempt to measure half the mouth. Sometimes it can also be easier if we use string or wire to take the measurement and then measure off the distance against a ruler. In the nose region we have a few measurements to take. One goes from the septum point to the nose flare for the width of the base of the nose and another goes from the nose flare to the nose tip called the nose arch measurement. An additional measurement records the position of the nostril. In the eye region we need to record the width of the bridge and the distance to the pupil. How we take these measurements I will describe in a moment, but beforehand other optional measurements can include the open eye region, the soft socket of the eyelids and the hard socket of the surrounding ridge of bones. Here we record their various vertical and horizontal measurements. Going back to the bridge and pupil, when taking these measurements the tape measure does not follow the contours of the face, it does not drop into the eye socket. Instead the tape measure is pulled taut from the bridge of the nose so it hovers over the pupil. We then record the distance of the nose bridge to around the tear duct and then to the pupil while the eye looks straight ahead. One last measurement we take is the cheek line. This starts at the septum point and finishes at the top of the vertical neck measurement that comes up from the shoulder, so just below the ear. All other measurements such as the temple line, cheekbow line, furrow and a host of others are measurements taken either for locating the ear region and for measurements around the ear, or for double checking our pattern drafts if we feel like questioning something. That is, they can assure us that things are okay or that maybe we have done something wrong, either in the taking of measurements or in our drafting.